Ladies and gentlemen, this for Game to the Comp video, we're going to be finally answering some questions regarding the KB Lake series of processors. Now, there have been quite a few reports that the 6700K versus 7700K really has no discernible differences in performance other than what is given by the clock speed. In other words, the IPC of the KB Lake and Skylake architectures remains pretty much identical despite the fact it's on a 14NM process. So in other words, it's just really clock speed advantage rather than um, any tweaks to the actual architecture itself which would levy additional performance. Well, EXP Review, which is a Chinese website, I've linked them down below, as is good manners of course, have actually got in their hands on a 7700K and compared it versus a 6700K. Now, to be fair to them, it's obviously still pretty early days, so it is possible some folks will be able to squeeze more performance out of it, but they did manage to get the processor running at 5 gigahertz on air at about 1.3 volts, which is pretty damn respectable. But the main focus of this video is actually on the performance of the chip as is. So obviously there is a clock speed advantage for the 7700K. It's running at 4.5 versus 4.2 of the 6700K in their tests. But using the same memory timings, there is obviously an advantage on the 7700K. Once again, given the fact it has a clock speed advantage, that's not really a surprise. Things, however, turn a bit different when the two processors are running at identical speeds, in which instance the clock speed advantage, of course, has disappeared, and so has the performance advantage of KB Lake. In other words, the two processors essentially are running neck and neck. Once again, memory timings remain the same. The difference is, however, the clock speed of the 7700K is stuck at 4 GHz, as is the 6700K. Now, in which instance, I'm sorry, I keep using the word instance, which is kind of annoying, but you get the idea. Um, if you were to look at, let's say, Blender 17.28, 17.32, um, Cinebench R11.5, uh, 1.98, 1.96, and so on and so on. And really, and to be honest with you, this is within the margin of error. Because even if you were to run a test like half a dozen times, you will get slight variances in the application results. It's kind of annoying, but that's what actually happens. So, for example, you could be benchmarking a GPU, and in one instance you'll get 97 frames a second, and another time you'll get like 96, and you can run it like literally two minutes later. But it's like, if, for example, is something happening in the background of the operating system? Is there like a scan running? Is Steam deciding to update or whatever? And obviously in benchmark rigs, it's a lot more streamlined. So typically the performance is a lot closer to one another. But there still are going to be those subtle variances between the two processors. Or rather, the two benchmarks. So what does this mean? Well... A couple of things. If you are one who wants to overclock their processor then maybe the 7700K will be the way to go. As is always the case when you're looking at very early results, larger sampling sizes are very important, so we can get an idea, for example, how many processors of 100 would get to, like, 5 gigahertz, how many out of, let's say, um, 100 would get to 4.8 gigahertz, and so on and so on, so we can get an average, a very bad case scenario overclock, an average overclock and if you're very lucky overclock now for the sake of argument a 6700k can squeeze up to 5 gigahertz obviously it does depend on the cooler you're using but more realistically 4.6 4.7 is probably going to be achievable once again your mileage will vary which is for example what power supply are you using what motherboard are you using what cooler are you using what's the temperatures and all of that type of thing but really it comes down often to silicon lottery but ultimately the two processes are very close to one another so my argument would be thus as follows if you are someone who can grab a very cheap 6700k for example you see one going on sale and there are some deals going around at the moment with the cyber week um sales and christmas sales then it might be worth you grabbing hold of the cpu 
if a couple of hundred megahertz don't mean that much. On the other hand, if you want the new platform, and we all know that that does come loaded with a few optional extras which may uh, definitely improve things, for example, additional PCIe lanes and whatever else, then perhaps going KB Lake is going to be the way forward. With all of that said, KB Lake is not really a major upgrade, as we'd already expected, we already knew, but this is good to confirm it, at least there's no IPC gains, if nothing else. And the second thing this does is it tells us that if you happen to have a Skylake rig, unless you've got, let's say, a 6600K, you want to do the BIOS update, buy a 7700K, in which case, great. But really, it's kind of down to AMD now to lure us in. So we know basically what Intel have got. The question, therefore, is what are AMD going to counter with? And we all know, of course, the answer is Zen. So what's the answer? Is it going to be 4 gigahertz running st uh, standard? Is it going to be 3.5? Is it going to be 4.5? What's the overclocking going to be like? What's the price point going to be like versus the number of cores? All of that stuff is going to make a massive difference. So hopefully that's answered some of your questions regarding KB Lake, because I'm still getting a few people asking whether they should take the plunge, especially now, as I said, the 6700Ks are on sale. Uh, you're not looking at massive percentages off. I mean, you can do, you can go to the usual websites like Overclockers UK or Complet or Amazon or wherever you happen to be buying from, and you can take a look yourselves. But it's around 10% off for many retailers at the moment, which means the CPU is around 310, 300 US dollars, depending on how lucky you are. And it's coming at the moment with a couple of games, which isn't awful. I'm not telling you to buy the 6700K and don't wait for KB Lake. I'm just saying that, you know, if you need a CPU now and you're buying it because well, you want to do some gaming over Christmas, which is a pretty pretty compelling reason to upgrade, if you, if I do say so myself, then you're probably not going to feel that bad about missing out a few hundred megahertz for KB Lake. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves, guys. Normal thing, like, share, subscribe if you've not already, um, especially with the YouTube bug which is doing the rounds at the moment. It would be greatly appreciated if you leave a like on the video. But take care of yourselves. Have a good one. Bye.